Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this great opportunity to bring His words to you. Now, this is a new week, and I know God has something great in store for you. Praise God. Listen, God is working out His plan for your life. Remember, the scriptures tells us it is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Listen, pay attention to the working of God in you and you will experience the greatness of his mighty power. Now, God is great. We know that. Now, imagine that great God working in you. Are you conscious that he is working in you? How does he work in you? It's not when you sleep at night. Something is just doing some work inside of you. No, God deals with us through his word. He sends his word to us. And when we respond to his word, things change. Our mindset, first of all, changes. Then we begin to change our attitude. And what happens? Our results will begin to change. There is no other thing that God can give you but his word. And that's one thing I want you to understand. And that's why I keep stressing this. Pay attention to hearing the voice of God. That should be your daily lifestyle. Remember Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 3, he says, Ye are clean. How? Through the words that I have spoken unto you. The Amplified Version says, The teachings that I discuss with you. So when we pray, we're not just looking at, oh, you know what? Yeah, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt. No, not just that. Simple, quiet communication from the Lord. You want to do something, and something as little as the Lord telling you, don't go right, go left. Guess what? That word, go left, makes you clean. Praise God. Yeah. It makes you clean. Praise God. So we're going to have an exciting time. This week, we are still talking on God's financial system. And I love the testimonies I've been receiving lately. Praise God. It's amazing. See, the word of God is working. Let's just bless him. Father, we bless you today. And this whole week, Lord. We open our hearts to receive truth from your spirit, Lord. And it is working in us, bringing a change in our lives. Thank you because burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed right now in the life of everyone watching and listening to me right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Our team scripture has been Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. Jesus speaking here. He says, do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moat and rod destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven and i explained to you jesus is not against you having treasures or laying up treasures he he is telling you look don't store it on earth store it in heaven and i explained to you that doesn't mean you're storing it only for the sweet by and by no that's telling you that you can save your money in heaven and use it whenever you need to praise God. And, and, and last Friday, we got talking about how to make withdrawals. And last week, I taught you how to deposit, how do you deposit money in your heavenly account. And then we, we got to receiving money from your heavenly account, withdrawing money from your heavenly account. And I stressed it that, look, the underlining factor is what's on your mind. What are your thoughts? Do you believe? See, do you believe you have an heavenly account? 
And that heavenly account, see the beauty of that heavenly account is this. See, the Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, right? In other words, we are joint uh, owners to everything that he has and everything that we have, see? So, that heavenly account where he's telling you to store up your money, it's not just your account, it is his account also. Now, what's, what does that tell you? The account is loaded already, praise God. Yeah, it's loaded. Jesus is telling us to store our treasure there. He is trying to get us to the place where we believe we have an heavenly account. And you can as well make withdrawals from that heavenly account. So, so the angels are not waiting for you to save up to one million before you can say, Lord, I want to withdraw one million. No, no, no. It is your acknowledging that, look, there is an account in heaven. That acknowledgement gives you access to that account. And you can withdraw everything there that belongs to Jesus. Praise God. Think about it. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. Now, you want to know what belongs to Jesus? I'll tell you. One day, tax collectors came to the house. And Jesus was in Peter's house that day. And they came and knocked, said, oh, you guys pay tax. And Jesus asked Peter a question. Say, hey, Peter, who pays tax? Citizens or strangers? Peter said, strangers. Said, so we are free. He said, yes. Jesus said, you know what? They are here. Let's not offend them. Let's not offend them. So what do you want to do? He said, don't worry. I'm not taking, I'm not taking your money. Take your hook. Go to the sea. The first fish you catch, open the mouth, you will see coins. Pay for you and I. I've said this several. How do you equate that story? Tax collectors are in the house to collect money. Jesus is instructing Peter to go to the sea with, he, with a hook and catch one fish. I mean, he could have told Peter, take your nets, go to the seaside, cast your net, and you'll catch many fishes. Go sell them, and let's have some money. That would have been awesome. But to tell you that this is a clear withdrawal from heaven, it came in the mouth of a fish. Praise <laughs> God. Oh, yes, it came in the mouth of a fish. And it was enough, what did Jesus withdraw? Enough to pay tax for both him and Peter. That's what Jesus did. But so how did Jesus do that? How did he know where the money is? Was it when Peter told Jesus that the fish said, oh, they, have, they are sending somebody to come and get me. Where's the coin that the sailors dropped in this sea? Oh, I've seen it. And then he picked it up. Nah, I'll tell you how this works. Jesus turned to the Lord and said, Lord, and that's what I'm going to be teaching about withdrawals. Lord, what do we do? See, it wasn't Jesus' original idea to say, don't offend them. It was the Holy Ghost idea. So I'm saying, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, Jesus always depended on the Holy Spirit. What did he say? He says, I do what I see my Father do. He said, the words that I speak, they are not my own. As I hear, so I speak. What does that tell you? That tells me when Jesus looked at Peter, when those tax collectors came, Holy Spirit, what do we do to these people? And the Holy Spirit said, give them money. Okay. So he now asked Peter, who pays tax? Strangers or citizens? Peter said, strangers. Now we are citizens, so we are free, right? Peter said, yes, we're free. And then Jesus said, the Holy Ghost has already told me we should give them money. So you know what? Let's not offend them. So where is the money? The Holy Ghost told Jesus where the money was. Now that's how that miracle came about. So when we make withdrawals, I told you, I told you on Friday, you make a request. You make a definite request to heaven. What do you need? What do you need? No, I'm not talking about spiritual things. I'm not talking about wisdom. 
I'm not talking about joy. I'm not, now you can ask for all those ones. You understand what I'm saying? But now I'm talking about meeting God, meeting your physical needs. You've got bills to pay. You've got obligations to meet. You've got gift to give to your family members. You've, you want to be able to help people. You want to be able to do stuff for yourself. You don't ever want to be seen as a poor person. Right? Now that, that's why I'm sharing what I'm sharing with you. So what do you do? Make withdrawals. So you ask the Lord, definitely, oh Lord, I, I want this thing. See? You go before him. Now when you go with the consciousness that it is a withdrawal, you are making. So you are not asking God and wondering whether God is going to say, hmm, is it okay? Is it not okay? Son, no. I don't think it's good for you to have it. No. You are making a withdrawal from your account. That is the consciousness that... See, listen. When you go to the bank to withdraw money from your account, do you go there and, and, and look for one of the bank tellers and say, please, please, eh, please, I'm begging in the name of God. You see, this form I just filled, this check I just filled out, you know, I, I need money. Please help me. Please help me. Is that what you do? No. You just go there, hey, good morning, good morning. You slip that check in there. And you are waiting for the response. Praise God. And then they check your account, the money is there. They said, oh, get everything that they need to do. Punch their, their, their computers, bring out your money, and they hand it over to you and say, thank you. And then you walk away. You didn't go there wondering, I hope they will give me this money. I hope they will not think something is wrong. I hope, you don't do that, do you? No, you don't. Now, that is the attitude with which you approach heaven oh thank you lord jesus and you make that request remember what jesus said in mark 11 24 what things soever you desire when you pray listen you desire when you pray so first of all is the desire then you don't stop at the desire you voice out that desire. Now, that is when you pray. Now, praying doesn't mean how I wish I have. No. You go before the Lord and say, Father, you know you're my Father, and I trust you, and I depend on you for everything. Lord, I, I, I need this right now. I, I need this, and this is the reason I need it. And then you pray like that. And guess what? He hears. Jesus said, believe when you pray. Believe that you receive it and you shall have it. When you pray is when you believe that you receive. Then he's telling you, surely the manifestation will come. So what do I do from the play time I ask him? And the time of the manifestation, I'll tell you. James 1, 5. He said, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask. I want to read that from, I want to read that from the Living Bible. James chapter 1, verse 5. I'm reading the Living Bible. It says, if you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly tell you. He will not resent your asking. Did you see that? Now, while you're waiting for the manifestation, he says, if you don't know what to do. Sometimes people ask that, okay, I've prayed, I've asked, what next? If you don't know what to do, ask the Lord. That's wisdom he's talking about. Ask the Lord. And he will give you without reservation. Praise God. <laughs> so have you asked the Lord today? Instead of wondering, uh, I don't know, will this thing work? Will this thing not work? Why don't you ask the Lord? And watch 
what he does. My time is up for today. Praise God. So I'm going to continue tomorrow. Listen, I want you to get this. Not just get this. I want to begin to receive testimonies from you concerning your withdrawals. Praise God. And you will. You are having a testimony this week. God bless you. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.